Lurking at the center of our galaxy is an object that's completely invisible, but weighs as much as four million stars. Astronomers now believe almost every galaxy has a supermassive black hole at its core. So, what are they? Science fiction sees black holes as cosmic time machines or portals to a parallel universe. But real scientists are finding that truth is stranger than sci-fi. You're about to enter a world where the very big and the very small are indistinguishable, where reality and illusion are one and the same. Astronomer Julie Comerford has been studying the centers of dozens of distant galaxies, trying to find signs of black holes, hoping to learn more about these mind-bending objects. It turns out that in all or nearly all galaxies, wherever we look, they have a central supermassive black hole at their heart. Supermassive ones are the ones that have masses of anywhere from a million to a billion times the mass of the sun. You can see a supermassive black hole when gas is falling onto it, and sort of right before the gas falls into it, it gets heated up and emits a lot of energy and can appear really bright. But when Julie investigates the glowing gas surrounding these giant black holes, she finds something totally unexpected. There's a cosmic dance going on, on a scale that's almost unimaginable. You saw two peaks in the light instead of just one. You'd expect one from one black hole that's just sitting at rest in its galaxy. But we saw two peaks with different velocities, and that immediately hit us as this has got to be something interesting. Julie began thinking about what would happen when two galaxies collide. And if both had black holes at their centers, what would happen to those massive objects? So when two galaxies collide, the black holes at their center, instead of crashing in head-on, they begin this swirl or dance. And the way that we can detect these vaulting black holes is by looking at the light that's emitted from them. So for the black hole that's moving towards us, we detect light that is at smaller wavelengths scrunched up together, so we see bluer light. And for the black hole that's moving away from us, we see stretched out longer wavelength light that appears redder. So it's this redder and bluer light that is a telltale signature of a black hole waltz. Every time we see it, we high five in the observation room and it just can't get over it. As Julie scans the universe, she finds the same remarkable dance happening time and time again. In galaxy after galaxy, black holes are paired up and dancing the cosmic night away. So we identified 90 galaxies from when the universe was half its present age, and we found that fully 32 of them, or about a third, had black holes that exhibited this blue and red signature. So that was really surprising that such a high fraction of the black holes were not stationary at the center of the galaxy at all, that they were undergoing this waltz with another black hole. Scientists like Jan Levin believe the discovery of waltzing black holes opens up a whole new way to learn what's inside them. Because their dance might not only be visible, it could also be audible. The scientific visionary Albert Einstein saw space and time as a flexible material that could be distorted by gravity. A black hole is merely a very deep well in this material. When two black holes come close to one another, these two orbiting wells stir up space-time and send out ripples that can travel clear across the universe. And these waves will move out through the universe traveling at the speed of light. So we can hope to not see black holes with the light, but maybe in some sense hear them if we can pick up the wobbling of the fabric of space-time itself. For the past several years, Jana and her colleagues have been trying to predict the sounds black holes make as they spin around one another. The calculations are not for the faint of heart. Modeling what happens when two giant objects create a storm in the sea of space-time takes some serious math and months of supercomputing. This is the orbit of a small black hole around a bigger black hole, and it's literally making a knocking sound on the drum where the drum is space-time itself. Well, it really sounds like, sounds like a, a knocking. <laughs> it starts to get uh, a higher frequency and happen faster until it falls into the big black hole. 
and goes down the throat. And then the two will ring out together and form one black hole at the end of the day. And it, it just sort of, you know, brrr, chirps up. Because black holes stir up the space and time around them so much, the orbit of one black hole around another looks nothing like the orbit of Earth around the sun. An orbit can come in around a black hole and do an entire circle as it loops around before it moves out again. So instead of getting a, an oval, you get a three-leaf clover that processes around. This clover leaf pattern keeps coming out of the simulations. Jana was shocked because this picture of how two of the heaviest objects in the universe move around one another bears an uncanny resemblance to the way two of the lightest objects move around one another, the tiny protons and electrons inside an atom. We can build a kind of classical atom out of a big black hole, like a nucleus, and a light black hole, which acts like an electron. And together they form a real atom in a sense. How could an object that weighs so much behave like a subatomic particle that weighs so little? When we talk about ordinary objects or people even, they are never exactly the same. I mean, you could try to clone me and still the different copies of me would not be exactly the same. And in that sense, people and ordinary objects are not like fundamental particles. They're distinguishable. But the black hole is quite different from that. Black holes are like fundamental particles, and that's very surprising because they're huge macroscopic objects. Right now, this idea is only a tantalizing hunch. But in just five years, supersensitive detectors should be able to pick up the ripples in space created by two massive black holes spinning around one another. And they'll tell us whether they really do behave like tiny atoms. But this connection between the very big and the very small has already sparked a war between two of the greatest living physicists. One of them, Stephen Hawking. The other began life as a plumber in the South Bronx and is now using black holes to develop the most revolutionary idea in physics since Albert Einstein, an idea that literally turns reality inside out.